Okay, so let's kind of pick up where we left off in class. Um, on this next problem, when you look at this, if you plug in a three halves, you will get zero over zero um, if you plug that in. So there's some simplifying we can do. Now, if you notice up here, this is the difference of two cubes. Um, chances are you're not gonna remember that formula, but use the clue down here at the bottom, two X minus three, and then use synthetic division and you'll see what the other factor would be. So if you remember that, um, we would have to divide everything, um, switch colors here. We would have to divide everything by two because, because of the two in front of the X. So we do synthetic division with a three halves out front and we're gonna have an, a four, eight, eight over two, so we have four, and that was the x cubed one. There is no x squared, there is no x, and here we're gonna have negative 27 halves. So you bring down the first number, three halves times four, the two goes into four twice, so we get six, then you add, then you multiply, and you're gonna get nine, and then you add, and then you multiply, and you, you're you always gonna get a zero remainder. So this is just to kind of help you out. So then that tells us that this was a two X minus three and a four X squared plus six X plus nine. So there, that's the workaround that I use if I can't remember um, a formula. And this is still the limit as x approaches 3 halves. So then the 2x minus 3's cancel, and now if you plug in a 3 halves, you can work that out. And I actually worked it out already. You can verify this, but you do get um, 27. So that would be the answer. On the next one, uh, you can start by plugging in a negative two, and if you do, you're going to get um, zero over zero. Um, remember, this one is a square root, so that's where the idea is to rationalize. So if you were to multiply by the square root of two x plus five plus one in the numerator and denominator, you will get the limit as x approaches negative two. So remember, this is just like the difference of two squares. So that's gonna cancel the square root out. You get two x plus five. Outsides and the insides are gonna be opposite, so they cancel, and then you have a minus one all over. And then again, the trick on this is don't try and do any kind of fancy simplifying. So I get the limit as x approaches negative two of two x plus four. Um, actually, let me go ahead. It is two x plus four, but I'm gonna factor the two out and have two times the quantity x plus two over x plus two times this. So then the x plus twos cancel. Now I can plug in a negative two, so I have a two on the top. Here um, I get negative four plus five is one, the square root of one is one, one plus one is two. So my answer is one. So that works. Um, we're gonna skip i and take a look at j. I was looking on my list of which ones I wanted to do. Sorry, this one's on there. So um, you're gonna have to actually, um, we wanna simplify this. So what I'm gonna do, um, actually, you know what? I think we are skipping J. So let's go to K. Maybe in class I'll decide later I wanna do it, but right now I'm skipping it. Um, so here we're going to factor 
So we're doing the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So I'm going to factor my numerator. Um, the only way to get 3x squared is 3x times x. The only way to get 2 is 1 times 2. But if I need a 7x in the middle this and everything's positive, this is going to be a plus 2. This is going to be a plus 1. If you FOIL that, you get um, what, we, what we need. This is the difference of two squares. The x plus twos cancel. So now if I plug in a two, notice that I get um, a non-zero because plugging in a two, I would get seven over zero. So remember that tells you something. That tells you that the answer is either gonna be um, infinity or negative infinity because we're only looking at a one-sided limit. So, um, so I know this much. It's one of these. So now I have to think about what happens. I'm approaching two from the right. So pl um, plug in maybe 2.1. I do it in my head. So if I plug in a 2.1, the numerator's positive. The denominator's positive. So my answer is positive infinity, and that's done. Okay, so not too bad. Okay, on letter L, we are looking at a one-sided limit. If you plug a three in, you are gonna get a non-zero over zero. So we know that we are looking, it's a one-sided limit, so we know we are looking at either infinity or negative infinity. So I would use a 3.1 something a little bigger than three that I'm plugging in since I'm approaching from the right. And so if I do that, um, I know the numerator is gonna be positive, the denominator is gonna be positive, so my answer for my limit is positive infinity. Then on letter M, it's the same function, but we're approaching three from the left, so I'm gonna use something smaller than three, so I'm gonna use a 2.9. It's gonna be positive on the top, it's going to be negative on the bottom, so my limit is negative infinity. Now, if I were asked the limit as x approaches three of this function, I would say does not exist because they go opposite directions. I also, if you were asked the limit as x approaches three of two x plus five over x minus three, and the answer is does not exist, but you would have to do both of these problems in order to know that. So. Um, yeah, they, they just kind of asked you the, t the two pieces here, but if you were asked just overall the limit as x approaches 3, then you would have to do both of those parts. Um, on this next problem, I'm actually not going to have us do this now. Uh, we are going to do so many of these because this is, this is important for when we get into derivatives, so I'm going to skip it for now. So I want to talk about the properties for limits. So suppose the limit as x approaches a of f of x is l and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is m. Find each of the following limits in terms of l and m. So there are some rules that we're going to use as we are solving some limit problems when we're combining functions. So if you are looking at the limit of the sum of these two functions, that is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. So basically, in plain English, the limit of a sum is equal to the sum of the limits. All right? Same thing holds true for subtraction. So we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. So I could say the limit of a difference equals the difference of the limits. For division, by the way, this would be, since we were defined as L and M, this would be L plus M. This would be L minus M. On this one, the, the limit of a quotient you guessed it, is the, we can say that that is the quotient of the limits. Which would be L over M. Okay, so moving on.
you can probably guess this one. We've got the limit of a product, which equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches a of g of x, which would be l times m. Okay, so those are all, you know, pretty basic. Um, the next one is dealing with c is a constant and then f of x is a function. So when you have the limit of this situation, then you can take the limit as x approaches a of c, the constant, times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. However, and you know, they put this like before, I should have done number seven first, the limit of a constant is just the constant, so then we would get c times l. On number six, when you have this situation where you're taking the limit of a function that's raised to a power, then you can just say that that's equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x raised to that power, and if this is l, then that would be L to the P power. And this is what I just used up here. The limit of a constant is just a constant. Okay, so we're gonna use some of those now and um, looking at our graph. So it says find each of the following limits applying the properties of limits. If a limit does not exist, state Y. So for the first problem here, we're looking at the limit as x approaches two from the left of a sum. So this is the limit as x approaches two from the left of f of x plus the limit as x approaches two from the left of g of x. So then you look at the graph of f of x, we want the limit as x approaches two from the left. So two from the left looks like it's gonna be um, Oh, two, not negative two. Two from the left looks like the limit is three. And two from the left of g of x, if we are approaching two from the left, then we're down on this piece, looks like the limit is one. Three plus one is four. Okay, for the next one, um, notice I have, um, I'm gonna do two things. I can, I can split this apart and say the limit of a difference is the difference of the limits, but I'm also gonna pull that two because it's a constant out front. So I'm gonna end up with two times the limit as x approaches negative one of f of x minus three times the limit as x approaches negative one of g of x. So then I look up here, approaching negative one, and this is from the left or the right. It looks like it is negative six, so I get two times negative six minus, for g of x, let's see, we're approaching negative one, so it looks like it is a negative one, so I get three times negative one. So now we have negative 12, that's gonna make this a plus three, so my answer is negative nine. Okay, on the next one, if we were to look at applying the rule here, we would get the limit as x approaches negative three of f of x minus the limit as x approaches negative three of g of x. So if I look at the limit as x approaches negative three of f of x, looks like it's a negative two there's a hole there, but that's okay. The limit still exists. Approaching from the left and the right, I get negative two. So then approaching negative three, uh-oh, uh got a vertical asymptote. So I have a does not exist. Well, if one of them doesn't exist and we have a vertical asymptote, then overall it does not exist. And I'm gonna put as my reason, since it says to give a reason, um, g of x, has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three, would be my reason. Okay, next. 
So for this one, um, I do have a constant, so I'm going to I'm going to pull that out front. Um, but I'm going to have negative two times the limit as x approaches six of f of x divided by the limit as x approaches six of g of x. So I'm gonna have negative two times, if I'm approaching six, looks like I'm at negative four. And for g of x approaching six, looks like I'm at, hard to count those numbers. I think that's a six. So I get eight over six or four thirds. Okay, next one. Um, I'm gonna, this two, I'm gonna pull out front. So I'm gonna have two times the limit as x approaches four of f of x times the limit as x approaches four of g of x. So I get a two, the limit as x approaches four of f of x looks like it is negative three. The limit as x approaches four looks like it's four. And when I multiply that, I get negative 24. All right, on the next one, I'm dealing with the power here. So um, that means I can just take the limit as x approaches negative two of f of x. And once I know what that is, I'm just gonna square it. So the limit as x approaches negative two, looks like we got a negative five there. So I square that and I get 25. So I mean, it kind of makes sense. These are kind of easier than some of the other stuff that you had to do with the algebraic limits. Okay, so this one looks a little different because it's like, wait, we didn't have a rule for square roots. Um, well, kind of we do because you can think of this as the limit as x approaches two t from the right of two times g of x to the one half power. So it's kind of like that power rule um, because remember square root is the one half power. So then that means that this equals the limit as x approaches two from the right of two g of x to the one half power, which means I can take the two out of this and put it here. And then still to the one half power. So we get two times the limit as x approaches two from the right. So approaching two from the right looks like I'm at six. So we get a six and that's to the one half power. So I get the square root of 12, which remember four goes into that. Four is a perfect square. The square root of four is two. So this would simplify to two root three. That would be my simplest answer. Okay, next one, um, I'm gonna use that quotient rule. So we've got the limit as x approaches two from the right of f of x over the limit as x approaches two from the right of g of x. So then two from the right here puts me at negative two two from the right here puts me at six. So I get negative one third. And the last one, using the quotient, changing it to the um, quotient, the, I'm, I said quotient, I think, difference. So I'm changing this to the difference of the limits So then approaching negative one, looks like I'm at negative six, minus the limit as x approaches negative one over here, 
looks like I'm at negative 1. So I get negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. So I think that was the last thing on here. Um, so that takes care of all the properties of limits that you're going to need to do. Um, when you guys get your assignment that's going to be page 31 to 34, it might be, a, I don't know that you're getting that for a couple days, um, but the, the, all these problems are going to help you to do that.